I think my spiciest hot take that I have is that people who haven't done force on force training shouldn't be giving their opinion on night vision lasers. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what I look for in a night vision laser and why the Holosun Iris is a great option and it's why it's one that we retail on Midwest Optics. Now, aside from that intro being a healthy bit of rage bait, um, what do I mean by only people who do force on course training should do night vision laser reviews? Well, what I mean by that is that um, a lot of times the reviews of night vision lasers are kind of taking place in a vacuum and they're happening in wide open terrain. Now I understand most of the time those videos are being filmed recreationally and the only places where you really can shoot, you know, at least commonly uh, in night vision environments is going to be outdoors. The, uh, the drawbacks there is that you get a really sterile vacuum environment in which it's very difficult to talk about the ergonomics and uh, what it actually means to use a laser in dynamic environments. I know that's a bit of a buzzword, so what I mean by that, a lot of times when you hear people talk about the ergonomics of a laser device, they're just talking about how it actually feels to use, but not necessarily how when a situation or terrain will dictate how fast they have to make those changes. So a lot of times also when we talk about you know the power output of lasers, guys want the most powerful laser possible. They want something that's full power because you know they see in the videos, people out in the middle of these fields the, uh, the Death Star Ray, right, going down uh, for, uh, you know, hundreds of yards. So anyway, we're going to hop right into it. What I'm actually going to do is I think I'm going to start from my favorite night vision laser, and then I'm going to work down to the iris. And don't let that deceive you. I actually really enjoy the iris. It's probably one of my favorite lasers that I've seen come out in a long time. Um, but we're going to contextualize why I enjoy it so much and why for its price point, it's actually a great buy. So just move some stuff around here. Get this out of the way. We'll come back to this 416. And we'll come back to this iris here in a bit as well. Right, so here we have my 11.5, right? This is my 11.5. It's got some four controls parts on here. It's got uh, BE Myers Mall Mod Light, which we do sell on our website. We do sell the Mod Lights and the Unity Pressure Pads. Now, this is the carbine configuration that I have the most time doing force on force training with. And I am, I'm very blessed, right? And I'm in a very niche uh, sector of the gun community in which I've had that option. And so what I've learned every time I do force on force is that I actually am gonna favor ergonomics over power almost every single time. Um, then that's not to say that the BE Myers Mall is a slouch in any way, uh, but there are certainly other options of lasers out there that are going to, to the eye and on paper, have more power, more milliwatts to them, um, but they may not necessarily be the right choice for somebody who actually is wanting to use this in any like serious hard use capacity, right? So the BE Myers Mall, uh, there's a million videos out there. I'm sure you've seen them, but essentially all you really have to be worried about with the mall is you have this propeller here that you spin and that's gonna change it from off to viz and then spin it all the way over to IR. And the thing I like about that is that the on switch is also the cover, right? So there's no cover you have to remember to remove. That'll be important laser. You see what I did there? That will be important later. Anyway, so when we are in the IR mode, all I have to worry about are these two buttons here and this little slider here. So uh, as we move this slider, pretty much think of it like, you know, what engagement distance you're dealing with. Um, all the way back, oh, by the way, the mall actually has three illuminators on it, right? So when I say illuminator, I mean like the infrared flashlight that you can only see with your night vision. Um, and it has three of them and they have different convergences. When I say convergence, I mean how wide they are in your field of view. All the way back is going to fill up your entire field of view, right? So your night vision is 40 degrees and all the way back, that illuminator actually fills all of it. Uh, and then we'll get into uh, how it changes in the forward two positions. But anyways, all the way back, I'm either gonna have laser only and illuminator plus laser. It's, it's pretty dead simple. That would be like for inside of a room, right? If I'm making engagements that are inside of a structure and it's just, you know, it's one room, there's really no depth or angles going on, I'm gonna use that position. And then I bump it forward. Now that forward position is going to engage my throw illuminator, which is the tightest illuminator that it has. And then back here, it's going to engage the 10 degree illuminator, which is that intermediate distance type of engagement. And I really like that I get those three different illuminator divergences with them all. Now, you're probably noticing that there's only two positions here. There's this little lockout and what I do, press it and go all the way forward. 
And now in the furthest most position, it's the exact same setups where this is my throw illuminator and this is my intermediate illuminator. They're just more powerful, right? So this would be great for outdoor engagements. Um, you know, maybe it would be around vehicles, but that is the mall. It's pretty hard to mess up the mall, especially just because of how simple it is. And it's very intuitive. The mall, it is my favorite. It is always gonna be the one I go to, especially when I do like force on force training or shooting at night. All right, so hopping over to my Wilcox Raid XE. This is my second favorite night vision laser, and it's not by much. Uh, I, one of the things I love about it is that unlike the Mall, it is very, very small. It's a very small laser. Uh, that's one of the things I love about it, and it has the very familiar PEC-15 style uh, mode selector, which in my opinion, it's a little complicated, but it's not really the end of the world. I can still work it. I do not like that there is a cover that is separate from the on-off switch. I like that on the Mall. It is, uh, it's all one system. I have seen dudes engage their laser, turn them on, come up to use them and realize that their cover had not been uh, removed. So uh, kind of funny if you ever see it happen. But anyway, uh, so just some other differences on the raid. I don't wanna get too in depth on it, but uh, we have this little wheel here and this wheel actually controls the illuminator divergence on the throw illuminator. Now this thing, like the mall, has a room illuminator, but all it is is just a little LED, you know, right here next to the main laser emitter and it fills the room no different than it does on the mall. Uh, and then it has a throw illuminator. Now the throw illuminator on its widest divergence is still going to be more narrow than the BE Myers malls intermediate illuminator. And that's actually one of the things that I do not care for about the RAID XE. I very specifically remember uh, using this laser in force on force and uh, be being kind of disappointed that I had to, you know, even on the widest divergence, move it around a lot to scan, you know, when it was outside of a structure. So did not care for that. And I also don't like that on the lower settings, unlike on the mall, uh, I can't really quickly change between my illuminator divergences, right? There's no fast way to change between the room illuminator and the throw illuminator. Uh, the way to do that is you have to hold this button for a specific amount of time, and I just don't care for that. So what I actually have this program to do is that on any of these low settings, as long as it's the illuminator, the fire button is going to be my wide room illuminator. And then if I come back to this pressure pad, I actually have it programmed to be my throw illuminator with the laser, obviously. So I do get a somewhat B.E. Myers Mall-esque functionality with it, in which this is a uh, wide room illuminator plus laser, and then this would be my throw illuminator. And then anything on the high power, it, you know, both of them are gonna do the, the same thing. It'd be the, the dual high. So. Kind of a cool little bit of functionality you can get with the RAID XE. Why do I like the RAID XE? Well, it's small. Uh, I think it's, its size and weight is probably my favorite thing about it. So when I'm using something like this uh, 416, you know, this 10.4 416, that's almost bordering on a, being a PDW carbine, uh, I do like the, the size of it, right? So I also like that it's ambidextrous, which is kind of a niche thing to, to prefer about it, but um, my wife is left-handed. I'm also left-handed, but I shoot right-handed. My wife is left-handed, and so she can actually work this uh, whole laser and white light setup with her uh, right hand, you know, because she'd be shooting with her left hand as the dominant hand. So it's ambidextrous, which is kind of nice. I'm gonna put this away now, but uh, that is my RAID XE. All right, so that was a lot of context to get to the Hollow Sun Iris, but I wanted to make sure you guys had that background information when I talk about what I look for in a night vision laser and how, in my opinion, the Hollow Sun Iris actually gives you a ton of value at its incredible sub $1,000 price point. In fact, I think it's really the only laser that is even worth spending your money if you wanna be sub $1,000 versus just saving your money and getting a BE Myers Mall or a Wilcox Raid XE. So let's just talk about it. Uh, we'll start with the thing that I like the most about it, which is that, uh, well, for starters, uh, it's a Vexel laser, which I'm not gonna talk about laser technology. Um, chances are, if you've done this research, you're already familiar with the difference between like Vexel lasers and uh, traditional edge emitting lasers. Or if you're not familiar with the technical side, you probably at least know that Vexel performs better, which is all you really need to know. So it is, I think it's actually the first budget Vexel laser that exists on the market. Prior to that, it was all, you know, Raid, Mall, uh, and then the th other thing I like about the uh, iris is that you actually get this uh, divergence control on here. Now, one of the number one complaints I've actually heard about the iris is they say that this divergence actually doesn't get wide enough. They wish it would be an even wider divergence, which 
on some level I do understand, uh, but at the same time, the thing that I find the most hilarious about this is this actually gets uh, both narrower and wider than the Wilcox Raid XE's throw illuminator. Now, it doesn't have a room illuminator on it like the Raid XE does, which as I mentioned was one of my favorite features about it, but um, it's incredible to me uh, and really kind of funny for me to hear guys say that they wish this thing had a wider range of divergence when it's literally a better range than a $3,000 laser. So. Uh, kind of funny to me. Other thing I like about it is that this fire button is right in line with this uh, adjustment slider here, this divergence adjustment, which is a great opportunity for me to talk about what actually comes with the iris. So, I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen these unboxed by this point. I don't want to ever try to offer anything that's not of value. But uh, it actually comes with a pressure pad that has both, you know, just the activating whatever mode you're on, and it has a vis override, which is kind of funny. I don't use vis override, um, but if that's a priority to you, you can use this pressure pad. And then I was using, which we do offer these on the website if you'd like this configuration, um, we do offer the uh, Unity Tactical Axon. And what's nice about the Axon is that I get my white light with this button and then my laser with this button. We also offer the sync variants as well. So if you want Viz Override and you want something like this where your Viz Override is activated with your, uh, with your white light at the same time, that's an option. But I don't use either of those. And the biggest reason for that is I had the uh, Axon on here and I was doing night vision shooting with it. And honestly, I found myself making really quick adjustments with this uh, divergence control, and then I would just hit the fire button, right? So I liked leaving my hand right here in order to be able to hit the fire button and actuate the slider. And so all here, I have a ton of control over the laser itself. And it is a tiny laser. It is a very tiny laser. It's even smaller than the RAID. And one of the things that I like about that is that even with this uh, Hodge P-Lock rail, which it's not a quad rail, but a P-Lock rail is a beefy rail, uh, I'm able to get my hand all the way around the laser and I'm able to work that divergence control and hit the fire button. So now you're probably noticing this, uh, this little cap on here is not stock. Now we don't sell these at least at this time, if that changes, you know, maybe we'll drop a comment, but uh, this is the Villain Weapon Systems Diffuser. And what I like about this is that it actually will diffuse my illuminator to have a room width to it, right? So it then consumes my entire field of view under my night vision. I basically have a way to get a room illuminator with this Villain Weapon Systems Diffuser that is pretty easy to flip on and off. If you've ever used the PEC-15, it's very similar to the illuminator diffusers. Uh, what is cool about it is that it has the cutouts for the laser, so it won't impact your Viz laser or your IR laser. And uh, you can just pop it over and you have a, a room illuminator. Now, just like the end goal, the one thing I don't care for is the fact that I have to reach up in front of a, you know, a hot gun and uh, actuate this little flip cap. You know, maybe I risk touching myself on the suppressor or just having my hand near the muzzle. I don't like that, don't really care for it, but it is what it is. Again, there's gonna be some drawbacks when you go to a budget laser, but honestly, I, I think the uh, the ergonomics you get are, are otherwise pretty well dialed in, except for the switches. You've heard it on other channels. Um, I'm gonna echo it, the switches are not great, and I really don't like this dual switch setup. They remind me a lot of the D-Ball A3 that had the you know two separate control switches. I don't know who thought of this. This is probably like the worst switch design ever for a laser. Um, you know, I'm not gonna harp on it too much, but I, I just don't care for it. So basically the way it works is uh, this is going to go from my off position, you know, the laser being off to my low power, and then all of the settings for what mode I'm in are along this left-hand dial. So this would be, as you already saw, my Viz laser. Maybe you can see that on the video. And then this is going to be my IR laser. This would be my illuminator only. And then this would be my dual IR laser and illuminator. And then moving this over to the high position, right, on the right-hand side, it'd be the exact same thing, right? So I already started over here. This would be dual high. And then this is my illuminator only. This would be my laser only. And then this would be my Viz laser on high. So that is the uh, the switchology on the uh, on the iris, which honestly I, I don't really care for. Um, it's gonna, honestly what I'm find, gonna find myself doing a lot, I can already tell, is most of the time just leaving it in high mode on the dual high. Now, that's totally fine. 
Um, I'm always going to want an IR pointer if I'm also using an illuminator. Uh, but one thing I did hear a lot of people say is that they don't care for how tight the illuminator is. One of the things I would like to point out is that there are still people out there that use clip-on night vision. So it'd be instead of you know, head-mounted night vision, it would be in front of a magnified optic. And that would uh, pair really well with how tight the illuminator can get. So don't think that everyone who uh, is using night vision is only head mounted. There are guys out there running clip-ons. So um, I think that illuminator would run great for clip-ons. And then obviously at that point, wouldn't want the IR pointer either, just the illuminator. So uh, it is a great laser. I really do think it's a, it's a good option. There's not really much else to say beyond that um, other than, yeah, I, I really don't think there's actually a need for a pressure pad. It is cool that they come with one. You know, you might be positioning this in a place like really further forward on like a 16 inch carbine. Maybe you have shorter arms and so you need a pressure pad. But if you're able to mount this somewhere where you can actuate this slider um, very effectively, you're probably not gonna need a pressure pad. So that's about it guys for the Holosun Iris. These are available on our website, not just the Iris 3, which is this model, but we also just got in some inventory of the Iris 1 and the Iris 2 as well. So if those models interest you, if you'd like to get the uh, the benefits of Vexel um, and have it be a more pared down laser or maybe like a PDW type setup, go check those out. Also go check out the brand new website. It just got updated. We're really proud of it. It looks so much better than the old website. Hope you guys have a great day. And if you have any questions, don't forget to ask them or email us and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Have a good day.